Welcome to the Amplify to Seven Figures podcast, where we look inside the mind of seven-figure entrepreneurs to see how they amplify their business and amplify their life. Let's welcome today's guest. Welcome to the Amplify to Seven Figures podcast. Today's guest worked as an engineer for eight years before quitting his job and turning his biggest hobby into a highly successful online piano course. His program, pianoin21days.com, has brought in over 2.5 million in revenue to date with over 7,000 students all over the world. He's also the CEO and founder of the Online Course Guy, where he helps people create profitable online courses Jack has helped hundreds of people start and grow their online course in a variety of niches such as farming, test prep, songwriting, guitars, and even accounting. Even boring subjects as accounting, you can still make something amazing out of. Uh, so please welcome to the show, Jack Hopkins. Great to have you on the show, Jack. Thanks, Paul. It's, it's quite an introduction. I appreciate that. And I uh, appreciate the invitation to have me on. Hey, it's, it's amazing to have you here. So now some people who are listening to this show, they're going to be going piano 20 21 days to learn the piano i've been trying for the last four or five years and i've, I've not been able to be able to get started at all so how can can you really learn piano in 21 days my biggest skeptics as you alluded to uh one one category of people would be those that have been like on the learning journey for a while they're like well you know day 21 was a long time ago and i still haven't learned and then the other side would be you know people that have like been teaching piano for like 40 years and they, you know, they they have the antiquated approaches and they're, they're like, who, who is this guy coming in here saying they can teach uh, something that takes a lifetime to learn in just 21 days. Um, but the, the, the real question is like, what does it actually mean to learn piano? Like piano in 21 days, what does that even mean? And so my promise uh, to people with my course is, is competency and, and very much like an 80, 20, approach to this. I truly believe that, um, that learning, um, learning 20% of piano can give you 80% of the results. And that's, that's what I'm going after. And so in my course, there's no sheet music. There's very little theory. There's very little drilling and scales. There's real actionable stuff. There's shortcuts, there's tricks, there's formulas. Um, it really works. Uh, people are actually learning to quote unquote play piano in 21 days. Um, and there's proof of that. And so can somebody really learn piano in 21 days? Well, when I came up with the idea back in 2013, uh, when somebody's never done it, then it's hard to say yes, but now there's thousands of success stories. Now, the one caveat I would say, the one catch is that most people it doesn't happen in 21 days, right? You've got to really commit to it if you're going to do it in 21 days. That doesn't mean it doesn't work. I have people going through it in 42 days, three months, even taking a whole year to, to do it. But hey, even learning piano in a year is better than most people can say. Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting that, let's just talk back to that 2013, right? So you initially marketed it as piano in 21 days. Is that right? Mm-hmm. So, so at, at that point, were you nervous at all of kind of going, do you, do you know what, can, can I actually do this? Uh, is it, or is it just something that I've been able to do myself? Yeah, sure. I was nervous. I didn't know if it was going to work or not. Um, I actually thought of piano in 30 days first. I was thinking it would be kind of a month project to learn. And um and I started putting the lessons together and the different topics. And, uh, you know, I, I, my pitch to people is that you're going to learn fast. You're going to learn quickly. Um, and so I knew I wanted to build in kind of a time frame into the name of the course or to the name of the brand. And so I originally thought of, you know, like piano in 30 days, but, um, I started putting lessons together and I was like, man, I think, I don't know if I can fill any, any more lessons than 21. And then I was like, you know, that's got it kind of got a good ring to it. There's the whole like 21 days to form a habit. So that's how I settled on 21, but I didn't truly know if it was going to work until the market told me that. So fortunately, fortunately it did work. That yeah, that and that's that's super awesome. And uh, over obviously over time, it's just it's worked better and better. Have you had to change the course over time, or have you? Is it always been pretty much the same thing since 2013? Yeah, so I just released version 6.0. Oh wow! So I'm always growing, always trying to get better. Um, I'm really really excited about this new version because so many people have found success with the previous versions, but this one, like in my humble opinion, just blows it out of the water. So yeah, I mean, as I get 
I get better at teaching. I mean, Paul, you should have seen those first videos back in 2013. <laughs> like, oh, talk about cringeworthy, you know? Um, but I get better at teaching. I get, I, I, you know, I get feedback from my students and understand what their sticking points are better, how I can help them better. I get better equipment, you know, cameras and lighting. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm on my dinky little webcam right now, but I've got a pretty good setup in here where I can film in 4k from three different angles, uh, and, and really try to try to convey how to play piano as best as I can to people. And, um, each with each iteration, I, you know, I think it's, it's more and more effective. Hey, and with the, so obviously you've got the upgrades in equipment and, and, and your own teaching style. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you find out what to change? Do you, do you go and uh, put out customer surveys? Do you, do you go and really speak to your audience and, and get feedback from them? Or do you go, do you know what? I just think it needs an upgrade. So I'm going to upgrade it. So I have done surveys in the past, um, and and one result of previous surveys was was a bonus course. Like well, a couple of years ago, I kind of did the ask method by Ryan Lebeck mm -hmm. and found out, for the most part, people were having success, but they were struggling with uh, with hand coordination. Like just the the simple thought of of getting your left and right hand to do two different things was still overwhelming to people, even those that had been through the course. So I, I was able to put an entire uh, bonus course together on hand coordination, which has been very very successful. But as far as the uh, update to the actual like piano in 21 days course and curriculum, um, that's usually just based on the feedback we get. I mean, we're constantly, you know, getting um, getting feedback from our students. We have we have automated touch points with people um, after a few days and then after a month and then after three months, like automatic emails that go out that say, hey, give us some feedback. I think one of them actually is a maybe a survey on the 90 days. But we're listening, and and once um once we get the same feedback over and over and over again, then then it's real, right? So for example, um, constantly we were getting complaints about day seven. I mean that that was by far the number one complaint. Jacques, I've been on day seven for like four days. Like I don't know if I can get through it. And I know, like having heard that so many times, I know what the problem, or I knew what the problem with day seven was. And so when I went to kind of update the curriculum, I, I just blew day seven up. I was like, you know what? This isn't working. Like that's gone. I'm not, we're just, we're, we're throwing that out completely. We're, we're taking a different approach. And so um, that's a very extreme example, but there's, there's um, smaller things within the course that people, you just, you, by, by looking at the responses, by looking at the email responses, um, my, my, my assistant was really helpful in, um, in compiling some of that information because she's constantly, you know, monitoring the Facebook group and the, and the inbox. And so she knows what people are struggling with most. So um, I just kind of laid it all out there and try to fill in the biggest sticking points while still leaning into the things that were working the most. And, and that's what I like about what you've done as well. You know, you've made it instead of just going, there's a massive bundle of information you've gone, it's 21 days. So if there's some, if there's something needs improving in the course, it's going to be one of those 21 days. And it's very easy then to go, okay, well, we'll just improve this bit and this bit. And hey, when I was reading up on you, you pretty much automated most of that process, right? Most of the online piano course, and you're not doing a lot of fulfillment or things like that. Is that correct? Yeah. So you're talking about like, um, in order to like market and sell it, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, yeah. So are you actively doing all the marketing and selling or, or have you basically got team doing that part and then the fulfillment in terms of when, you know, when people buy it, is there any handholding that goes on where they direct contact with you or are you kind of like, hey, this is like a, a passive income beast now that, that works for me? Hmm. So I, I go through seasons um, where I'm like more into it and then other times less into it. And it's just based on how I'm feeling. Like right now I'm really, really into it and want to make it as good as possible. But there's times where I want to take like weeks or months off and focus on other things or just like focus on my family or go on a nice long road trip or, or, um, or vacation somewhere. But right now I'm in the thick of it, just kind of revamp, revamping, uh, finishing revamping everything. We, we not, not only launched the new version of the course, but we launched a whole new platform. We moved our course off of ClickFunnels and onto its own thing that's got so many more uh, features. And uh, it's just, it's been amazing so far. The response has been really, really great. Um, but as far as like automation and systems, like the, 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 the selling and the marketing, you know, we've got a really dialed in evergreen funnel and, and relaunch system. So that's, 
that's fairly automated and very, I have very little to do to do there other than just make sure it keeps working. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as far as like after the sale and touch points, what I do is at, anytime somebody buys my course, they sign up within 24 hours, they will get a personal video for me, welcoming them to the course. I use Bonjoro for that. Um, and it's just, you know, 20 second video that just really starts the relationship off on a really good foot. People, my students are blown away that they get a personal video from me. That's something I've been doing for years. And then I also do a, um, a live Q and a with my students once a week. Um, so I'll jump on camera and just see what they want to talk about. We, I just do use zoom webinars and they interact with me over the chat and it's just another value add I can give to them. Um, and if they're stuck with anything, it's just a place that I can, you know, get on there and help them with specific issues. That, that's awesome. So do you feel like having those regular touch points and with your audience still is, is still important, even though you've automated a lot of the evergreen process, it's still important to be in that community and having at least once a week touch points with them. It's important, but not necessary. Um, mm. You know, and, and by the way, that's another way of getting feedback is in those live Q and A's. I can, yeah. you know, I get the same questions over and over and over again. It's like, okay, well that should be in the course um, or, or taught better inside the course. Um, so I didn't always do the Q and A's. That's something I actually started once the lockdown started, you know, last, uh, last March with COVID. Um, my business did really well. It was very blessed. You know, a lot of everybody was staying home and so many people have learning piano on their bucket list that my traffic soared and, um, my, my sign up soared. And so I was looking and, and not only that, but my, my old students that have previously purchased were reinvigorated and were coming back. And so I had more people than ever trying to learn piano from me. So I was just trying to figure out how I could lean into that more. So that's when I started the weekly live Q and A's and, and haven't stopped since because it's been such a good experience. So most of the history of the course, I have not done the Q and A's. Um, but it's, it's a really good way to, to keep up with the pulse of your students and what they're, what they're dealing with, what they're thinking on their side. Um, but I, my, my course was certainly successful before doing that. Um, so I would say there's three ways to go is like to not do any touch points after the sale, which a lot of people go with. Cause like passive income sounds really sexy. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can work or you can, you know, take it to a level that I've taken it where there are, there is some interaction or, Another way that works really well is if you can have somebody else on your team do the, the interaction, right? So right now I'm still doing the weekly Q&As, but eventually I'm going to probably do them every other week and have, have somebody else on my team do the alternate week. And I'll probably be doing them less and less. And, you know, somebody else on my team might eventually do the Bonjouros after, after somebody signs up. So I think the, the personal touch point is really nice. And if you can't do it yourself, uh, the next best option is somebody else on your team uh, with the worst option being none at all. Yeah, yeah, and you mentioned about Bonjour as well, and I think it's something that a lot more people uh, should potentially get involved in. It, you said you've been doing that for for a long time. Did you notice a difference in like completion rates as well when people people start to get a personal touch, or like has it made a difference to the overall experience or referrals or anything? Unfortunately, I don't have any exact numbers. I would love to be able to say, yeah, Paul, you know, if completion <laughs> went up by thirteen point three percent, refunds went down by. 27%. I don't have any of that. I think it's just, um, it's clearly injecting some goodwill into the universe overall. And the response, you know, the, the normal response to the Bonjour is, wow, like I'm blown away. Can't believe you would take the time to send me a personal video. You know, I always, I always call them out by like first name and last name so that they know I took the time to, to record a video just for them. You know, if, if somebody named, you know, John signed up and I say, Hey John, you know, welcome to the course. Then they might think I just have one for anybody named John. Um, so the response is positive and that's enough for me to, to keep doing it. I like, I like it. And you're obviously selling a course. that's not a make money online, right? There's a lot of make money online courses out there. How is, is, is it different the way that you sell a course that's not make money online? Um, or have you found it easier or harder that I know it's hard to compare because obviously you haven't got, you haven't got to make money online, but how do you feel it's different? Yeah. I mean, I do have a podcast on, um, on the topic of online courses. I've had that for about four years. So I do talk about the business side here and there. So I understand what it's like to try to, to, to market more of a money-making opportunity versus more of a like hobby opportunity like this. But that is one of the biggest, um, 
the, the, the biggest things uh, that, that people like in the business world are attracted to when they hear about the piano in 21 day story is like, wow, it's, it's been pretty successful for a non money making opportunity. Right. And, and a lot of people get discouraged with like online courses thinking that you have to teach a topic that's going to make people money. So to specifically answer your question, like you asked about, you know, how is it different? I think the key is how you convey the value. Right. If you're if you're teaching somebody like, for example, one of my good friends, um, Nate Dotson, his course is on teaching people to grow and sell microgreens. So microgreens are these baby versions of plants that are like 40, 40 times more nutritious. Um, you know, chefs put them on guys garnishes or people put them in smoothies and whatnot. Well, he teaches people to grow them. And if, if he stopped there, then maybe that would be a hobby, but he teaches people to grow and sell them and basically have a six figure business on how to do that. Well, he can, he can say in his marketing, like, look, if you go to the farmer's market two times and, and can do, do what I'm telling you to do, then you're going to make your money back, you know, in two weeks. Like that's the key is like, you can talk about how you're going to make your money back from this course and how much of a no brainer it is. Right. Whereas with, with more of a hobby where you're literally not going to make money. There's no, really no way to make money. You've got to convey that value some other way. Now I can compare it to the mainstream approach. Every, 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 um, everything you can learn or every online course, like has a, a mainstream approach for me, it's traditional piano, like we weekly in person piano lessons, like a lot of people took when they were a kid. So I can compare that. Hey, you know, you will have gone to after, you know, two and a half months, you will have gone paid, paid more for that than you will for this course. Um, so that's one approach, but, but better than that is, um, if I can really get people to see like their potential transformation, like if I can get them to see like in as little as three weeks from night right now, like what, how, what would that be like? What would that do for you in your life? Like you can be playing songs that you actually like to be playing. You can have fun at every time you are at your piano, you can be playing for your friends and your family. When there's a piano out in public somewhere, you can just sit at it and play music and you can play songs you like, or you can make stuff up and you can do all that. You can learn all that in as little as three weeks from now. Right. If people can see that and understand how valuable that is. Mm -hmm. Then they, they sign up as opposed to, okay, how quickly am I going to make my money back? How quickly am I going to get an ROI? Yeah, it's really interesting, like when you're talking about the transformation and is, is that something that, that you got dialed in with your messaging to start off with? Or is it something that you had to do a lot of feedback from the audience to kind of go, OK, what is the transformation that I'm really creating for someone? Paul, I had no clue what I was doing when I started. <laughs> not that I not that I know everything now by any means, but this was no on no uh, overnight success. No, that. I didn't, I never used that word transformation until well into, um, years into the business. But that's, that's one of the most important pieces is to, is to, first of all, you know, make sure I'm able to transfer, transform and not just inform, right. Not just my mm -hmm. course is not just a collection of information. It's actual, an actual transformation for people. I'm transforming people to, to those that don't know how to play piano and are intimidated by it into somebody that, knows how to play piano and is not intimidated by it. Um, but no, I never, that, that's something that never crossed my mind. And, you know, when I first got into this, it was, it was about the passive income. Like that, that's, that was my motivation was purely money, passive income and quitting my job. But now that I'm here on this side, like um, my passion is making as many students successful with the piano as possible. I love it. I love it. And the fact that you've come from a musician background, right? I, so I, I used to be a wedding singer and played drums and all those kind of things. So uh, yes. what, what I've noticed is the more you say that to other entrepreneurs, the more they go, oh, yeah, I was a musician before I was an entrepreneur as well. And there seems to be quite a few of them about. Do you think having a musician creative mind it actually helps in the being an entrepreneur? Well, you know, I, I would I would have never called myself a musician. That's, that's okay. That's part of it. Right. So I'm, I'm very left brain. I'm not right brain. Right. I, I, for, ever since I was five years old, I wanted to be an engineer, right. I was always good at math, science. Um, and the only reason I ever got into piano is because my parents put me in piano lessons when I was five years old and I absolutely hated it. And I was very shy, reserved, 
you know, wanted to make my parents happy kids. So I stuck with it for 12 years, even though I hated it. And um, so eventually, like in college, I kind of found a, a, a better approach to, to playing or one that worked better for me. So no, I've, I've never really considered myself a musician. Um, and I'm, I'm very, very left brain. And that's actually one of the reasons this has worked is because people understand like they can they can relate to me. Like I'm not a big music nerd that has like two degrees in music and all this. Like I'm somebody who's more similar to them. I'm not a natural here. I'm not just a complete music nerd. And hey, that may be a maybe somebody you want to learn from. That's yeah, that's fascinating because I didn't didn't realize you haven't got that creative side as creative side of your brain. And so like that that logic and that numbers and that engineering side of things then is is that helped you when you've grown and scaled from a numbers perspective to like know your number you said about the evergreen funnel working. Is that been you're very clear on what the KPIs are and, and whether something is or isn't working. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, exactly. So I, yeah, I love the, I love the business side of this. I mean, I love people help. I love helping people learn piano, but I also love the business side of it. So yeah, I, I look at certain KPIs each day. Um, I've got a really dialed in evergreen funnel that is, you know, something I've, I've come up with and tweaked throughout the years based on the data I'm receiving. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, I'm constantly analyzing everything, making sure it's all dialed in. Um, and if I were, if I were more right brained, then the, the business would look very different and it, it wouldn't necessarily be worse, but it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't be probably as systemized and automated and the teaching would probably be different and it would probably be appealing to a different audience. What? What do you think was the hardest thing then to to automate through through the the process? Was it hiring the team? Was it like you know actually building the process or something different? What was the hardest thing to automate? Well, you know, if you automate something, it better be working, right? You don't <laughs> want to automate something that's not working. So for me, like it was. I mean, my initial thought is just the evergreen funnel because. I started this in 2013, but I, I didn't really find any level of success until probably 2016. So about three years. Wow. And that's because it took me that long to really dial in um, a working evergreen funnel. So I tried all kinds of things. Uh, and once I kind of had a funnel that that I felt was working for for my niche, for my audience, then, then I went and automated it and made it evergreen, signed up for deadline funnel and all that. And so by the end of 2016, that's when it really started to, to take off in, in an automated fashion. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that it took, like you say, it took three years. Everyone sees where you are right now. Uh, but those first three years, were you still working, still working a full-time job at the same time then? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I quit, I quit my job the last day of 2015, December 31st, 2015, not because it had worked yet, but because I needed the time. I needed to spend the time on it to make it work. Right. Yeah. So at the time, um, my wife had already quit her job as well. Cause, um, cause we had had a, our first kid in 2015. And, um, so it was, a, it was a tough call. It was a risky move. We had some savings, but we were bringing in about probably a thousand dollars a month. I was making like three core sales uh, a month, um, at the time. So it was very scary. But I felt like it, it was kind of a catch 22. Like I felt like it could never take off if I was working my full time job. So I needed that time to spend on it. So um, fortunately, by the end of 2016, it started working because we basically gave, gave ourselves a year to figure out if it was going to work. And then I would have to go back and you know, find a job, go back to you know, save company or find, it, find a job elsewhere. Um, so as it turns out, you know, spending that time really like learning this marketing stuff um paid off and i never had to go back to work i love uh, i love it and yeah it's 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 a key thing that it's interesting when we put a deadline on something and yeah. uh when we go okay it needs to happen by the end of 2016 and you get end up getting some months before the end of 2016 we go oh wow now it now it works um you, have you found that found that like even more recently and things as well when you go do you know what if i'm going to put a deadline on something it just happens one, uh, yeah, one thousand percent. I mean, to take it a, to, to take the story a step further back in 2016, what really happened is it was like it was like October, and I still hadn't made it make it work yet. And my wife comes to me, and she was pregnant with our second kid. Oh, wow. so that that really like 
pulled the deadline up even more. So I, my immediate thought was like, okay, now I have to go back to work. Like, okay, the deadline was, you know, January 1st, but now it's now like we're having a second kid. Oh my gosh, we need a bigger car. We need a bigger house. This is crazy. Um, so I did go on like a couple of job interviews, but that was, that was crunch time. Like I had to make it work. And so within, within a month is when I had the, the finally had the working funnel dialed in. Um, so that was the big catalyst was, was finding out we were pregnant with the the second kid, but even, even today. Yeah. Like deadlines are hugely important. Like, um, I need to script out the next YouTube video. Okay. It's on a list, but it's like, okay, I've got to give myself, like, it's gotta be finished by end of day, Wednesday. Um, it's really important for, for my workflow to have, give myself deadlines or have somebody on my team give me deadlines. Yeah. Yeah. And I bet you find that happens more now as well, where you, you almost feel that accountability to your team rather than just yourself. And then also responsible, like you say, now you've got more kids, then you feel like you've got that extra responsibility to just make sure everything is done on time and stuff. Is that, is that been a shift? Well, that's, that's huge, Paul. I mean, um, about a year ago, I hired like a, like an operations person, like an integrator. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been a total game changer for the, for the business. Cause for the first time, like somebody was holding me accountable to things like you said. Right. So before, like if I had this goal to, to release a new YouTube video every two weeks or every one week, well, if, if I didn't do my part, the only person really holding me accountable was me. Like my video editor, like if I send him, if I send him raw files, then he's going to edit them. But if I don't, then, oh, well, like he's going to work for some other client or whatever, you know, but now, now I've somebody working on more of the day to day and holding me accountable and she's assigning me deadlines. And, uh, it's a lot better that way. Yeah. Did, did, did that take some getting used to like the first couple of months where you kind of like, Oh, okay. Oh crap. I I realized that (laughs) I haven't done this or I haven't done that because you like, I've got to get it done now. It was really nice. It was really, it, it, it didn't take some getting to used to it, That was, that was the big bottleneck in my business was, was me. Yeah. Um, and I think too, when you reach a certain level of success, especially if it's like a lot of the success is passive and like, you're literally making sales while you're sleeping and, and you don't have to work very much. It, uh, it does create a complacency. Right. And it depends on, you know, what your initial goals are, were and what your goals are going forward. And so I definitely fell into a level of complacency when there was still so much room for growth. Um, And so having her around and and she comes at it from a very different perspective because she's not the one that created it. It's not her baby like it is for me. Mm -hmm. And so together we make a good team in, in, um, in planning for the future as well. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a danger is the, is the complacency, um, which, you know, it, it kind of makes me sound a little bit spoiled. It's like, Oh, I feel so bad for you. You were, you were making passive income, but, um, I, you know, I put off making this latest version 6.0 for so long because I knew the effort it would take to make it, even though it's now, it's now helping people like the feedback's been awesome. Like it's, people are loving the new course. And, um, I wish I would have done it so much sooner. Cause now like I, I want, like, that's my top thing. I want to help people learn piano. Yeah. I, that's, it's really interesting to just hear how that mindset sh- shifts. And then when we get to a certain level of CEO, we just go, do you know what? I am the bottleneck and you accept that and, yeah. and, and move forward. So that's, that's really, really great, Jack. Um, and one question that we always ask people is what do you want to be remembered for when you die? Hmm. That's a big one. That's a big, a big one. one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sure my, ch- my answer will change throughout the years and, and my answer wouldn't be the same, you know, five, 10, 15 years ago as it would be today. But, but right now, I mean, as, as it turns out, this is, this is kind of my thing is like teaching this, this unique way of learning piano. It's actually working for people. And so I want to be remembered um, by most people as, as the, the, the person that actually taught them how to play piano. Like so many people want to be able to make music on their own. Like everybody likes music. Everybody likes listening to music for the most part, but not everybody can play an instrument and make music on their own. And a lot of people that want to be able to do that um, either are intimidated by what it would take or have failed in the past. And so if I can be that person that 
finally got you over the edge, like showed you that it wasn't, didn't need to be intimidating or taught you in a way that actually worked for you. Um, that's, I would say how I want to be remembered is, is somebody that was actually able to teach them how to play music. That's, that's, that's fantastic. And, and Jack, what would you say is one quick win that people can use to amplify and usually for say business, but because, you know, it's not a, uh, it could be either actually amplify the business or amplify the life. What is one quick win someone can use today? Mm, okay. So the first thing that comes to mind would be to frame, frame decisions around what is, what is best for the customer. I mean, in my case, it's what's best for the student. Um, now you don't want to take that too far, obviously, but for the longest time, I ref- I, I've, I framed all my decisions in the business around me and my lifestyle and trying to make the most amount of money. And when I shifted that mindset to, okay, what's best for the student that, you know, the, the money, the money followed, right. The, uh, that side of it really followed. So that's, that's really the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, I like that. And, you know, you can use the same, same thing in, in life and in, and in business, like with, with the life, what, what is the best thing for my life overall, but also what's the best thing for the people around me that I'm helping and supporting. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's really valuable. What, so Jack, it's been great having you on the show. Where can people find out more about you? Yeah, Paul, I appreciate Once again, thanks for the invitation, man. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, piano win 21 days.com. Uh, I, if, if it sounds unbelievable, there's, there's uh, free stuff there for you try it for your, for yourself. That's the best way, uh, that I can convince you to buy it is to, to try it out and see and show you how quickly you can get results. And then, uh, as I mentioned very early on, I do have a podcast as well, where I just kind of geek out on the business side of things and specifically online courses. And that's just, you know, very original name. That's just called the online course show. So I think it's probably the top, uh, podcast fully devoted to online courses. So we're on all the platforms there. It's been going for, for several years now. So those are, those are the two places, piano in 21 days.com and the online course show. So piano in 21 days.com and the online course show. You've been listening to amplify to seven figures podcast with me, Paul Lace and my amazing guest, Jack Hopkins. So remember amplify your business and amplify your life. Have a great day. See you soon. Thanks for listening to the Amplify to 7 Figures podcast. To access the show notes, episodes, and this month's giveaway, head over to www.amplifytosevenfigures.com. Remember, amplify your business, amplify Amplify your your life.